Mr. Crispin here once again and welcome to my workshop. Now you know me, I'm one for the details. The details and associated footage however can prove to be a bit much for the average sane human being. And so today, for the average sane human being, I have taken my previous seven videos and condensed the whole lot down into 12 minutes. So here is how I made the pistons and associated components for my steam locomotive. Kicking off with the drawings, and these are a little involved, so I've simplified them. Piston at the top, bobbin at the bottom, and rods through the middle. Here I am at the lathe with a piece of cast iron, and I'm going to kick off manufacture by facing the front face and roughing the OD. Checking the work as I go, and from here it is a bit of roughing the piston ring grooves, drilling, boring the piston rod diameter, and tapping a hole for the uh, piston rod to screw into. From there, that's parting off, that is one semi-finished piston. With that out of the way, I then repeated the whole sequence on the remaining material to give me two semi-finished pistons, and from there I carried out some alignments and uh, in a four-jaw chuck, set them back up, running true radially and axially, and I then proceeded to start machining the second op, Facing off there and checking for parallelism and overall width. And from there, boring the recess for the piston ring nut and with a rather wobbly tripod, chamfering the internal bores. A quick dust down with Brother's toothbrush and there are two semi-finished pistons ready for mounting on the rods. On to work on the valve bobbins, and I'm doing these a slightly unconventional way. I'm starting by facing and drilling, and you'll see what happens later on. Steady in place from the tailstock, and I am now roughing the OD. I'm turning the recess using a round nose tool for the correct corner radii. That is a uh, round nose tool ground from a piece of high speed steel. Finishing the OD of the bobbins again with the round nose tool, this time for a surface finish rather than to produce a particular radii. And from there plunging in with a narrow grooving tool to put in the oil grooves. Now for my cunning plan. I started by drilling and the drill bit has got to roughly where my finger is so it's still not a fully formed bore. What I'm going to do now before I finish the bore is take this grooving tool that I've ground up and I'm going to work on the back face. So I'm going to finish the back face of this bobbin now and that leaves the component like this. So roughed out at the uh, chuck end and what I'm going to do now is complete the drilling of the bore and in doing so I will separate the piece from the stock material. There you are as you uh, see it away the bobbin comes from the uh, stock material and that leaves me a bobbin that has been finished in one op. A quick manual deburr of the rear chamfer and uh, that's that. There I have two finished bobbins and two semi-finished pistons. Onto the rods, I require two of each design. These are in stainless steel and the first process is to centre drill the end of each rod. So eight centre drilling operations. That gives me four rods in stainless steel ready to proceed and these are being machined using the traditional between centre setup with drive dog arrangement. And my methodology here is to start at the chuck end and work my way down the piece doing the required operations, advancing the fix steady as I go. With a narrow rod like this, deflection is obviously the uh, prime cause of issues. So the steady advance is down, and here I am doing some screw cutting. This is a quarter inch by 40 thread going on with a hand ground threading tool. And I just worked my way along the piece, threading and checking with wires wherever was required.
finishing up the last diameter on these rods and that gives me all my pieces I've done the piston rods I've done the valve rods the nuts the pistons are semi finished and the valve bobbins are finished the nut machining you can see in my video machining nuts I have a not included it in this little segment but on to assembly and I'm finishing the pistons once they're mounted on the rods so they're being loctited on with high temperature loctite the retaining nut goes on there you don't want your piston coming off and the whole lot is uh, being tightened down with a homemade pin spanner before finish machining I'm checking with a 2 micron indicator that the rod is aligned to the machine's axis that way the finished machining of the piston will be and I am then proceeding to finish up now sorry for the obstruction here I've had a big head since I was two finishing the uh, piston ring grooves finishing the OD with a round nose tool and that finishing just guarantees everything is concentric and well aligned to the uh, rod that it will be running on into the collet chuck to lose the uh, end tail and that is one finished piston I then repeated that for the other piston assembled the valve bobbins and rods with their required nuts and that gives me my pistons and rods on to piston rings and these of course are for sealing on the board so uh, I started by facing and center drilling roughing the OD and typically what you do here is bore yourself out a tube and then just part the rings off I however approach this slightly differently I've started with a stock diameter roughed it down and I'm now putting in what will be the groove side wall so I'm going along here making piston rings that are still joined in the middle that's the OD's done but I need to internally chamfer them and that is where this little tool I've ground up comes in this is a 45 degree chamfering tool for my internal corners and what you're looking at here imagine a load of piston rings sat on a rod so these rings are going to be separated from that diameter uh, that is currently retaining them and these chamfers will then be the internal chamfers so uh, that is what to picture in your mind and the question is how am I going to separate those rings from that stock diameter mm -hmm. down uh, that they're all retained by well in comes my specially ground trepanning tool and I'm basically going to work my way along the diameter trepanning the rings off from the inside this allowed me to finish all the crucial surfaces in one setup and this internal bore which doesn't matter is the one that's being used to part the component from the uh, stock material once separated I then used some homemade tooling here div devised with a collar and tapered plug to uh, split the rings this is at the arbor press and I just went through them one at a time and split them I then stretched them onto the mandrel to take them out to the required size for heat treatment I'm going to heat treat them oversized so that when I relax them off the mandrel they come down to their running size heat treatment now I heated these up to a good dull red and then I left them and came back before bed for a quick look at how they turned out yeah very good they look fine to me however there was problems ahead all I had to do was put the ring on but disaster I could not get the rings to go into the bore and this was a real challenge I had to go away stop what I was doing do some research into the field of piston rings I eventually managed to get one piston ring into the bore but it was not satisfactory far too strong the ring needed to be weaker because it was exerting too much force also you can see their daylight the rings are not round so problems with the piston rings first of all I wanted to weaken them so I devised a rework fixture that the ring would sit in and allow me to then use a boring bar to bore out the inner to weaken it so it would not be so hard on the uh, bore of the cylinder so using a boring bar at that angle I was able to bore and um, chamfer both sides weakening the ring you can see they're much thinner now I had to correct the roundness so I devised a sleeve that was the same diameter as the bore of the cylinder into which I then put the rings squaring them up with the piston and I then stacked them three rings at a time in this device once they were in this device I then loaded the whole lot onto a mandrel and 
once on the mandrel I placed a cap on and that cap is effectively going to clamp the rings at the diameter they are sitting in that sleeve so in other words I'm clamping the ring at their working size I'm then checking that the whole thing is concentric and making any adjustments if required and once I'm happy that bolt is tight and I'm removing the sleeve to leave me the exposed running surfaces of the piston ring at their running size I am then turning down a very small amount of material to clean up the OD. I've now managed to correct the errors in roundness, manual deburring, washing the parts in paraffin and rechecking the fit much better. On to fitting of the pistons rings A nervous moment but with a bit of encouragement they went on. And there I have a piston with associated rings and the sleeve was used for a secondary purpose to guide them on. That sleeve is actually slightly above uh, the bore diameter, I said it was the same, it's actually slightly above which meant that I had something to play with on those piston rings when it came to machining them so I was able to machine the piston ring down to its running size I should have said that bore was slightly over but anyway the piston goes in there it is and up and down it goes a nice fit and all round a satisfactory outcome after uh, what had been a bit of difficulty with those rings. Well there we are, that was a whistle stop tour of pistons and rods. Now if you are a average sane human being and you manage to sit through that for 12 minutes without requiring any medical assistance then please let me know in the comments. For the rest of you, you can find the full videos uh, in links that I've put in the description below. Apart from that, all I've got to say is thank you for watching I hope you found this interesting and see you on the next video.